Have you ever wondered what math looks like in third grade? My name is Rebecca Kramer de Ortiz, and I'm the math instructional coach for kinder through grade eight here at Intermericano. In this webinar, you will learn what your child is learning, how they are learning, and why we teach math the way we do here at Inter. The slides in this webinar are very detailed, so feel free to pause at any time to read them more in depth. Let's start off with a word problem warm up. Sean and Trish scored 36 goals in all. Sean scored three times as many goals as Trish. How many goals did Trish score? How did your brain solve this? In class, we want to focus on your strategy and not just the answer. We encourage the seven step model to solving word problems. Here's how I would solve this. First, I underline the question. Then I will write the question as an answer. Now I have to represent the problem using a bar model. I would show that Sean has three units and Trish has one since it says Sean scored three times as many goals. I know that altogether they scored 36 goals. Next, the all important bracket with the question mark to ensure I know what I'm looking for. Now that the bar model is complete, I see that four units is 36 goals. So to find one unit, I divide 36 by four. Trish is just one unit, so that means that Trish scored nine goals. Lastly, I plug my answer into the sentence I already created. At Inter, we use Common Core State Standards to guide what we teach. We use a program called Math and Focus, which utilizes Singapore math methodologies. We stay up to date on current best practice and we play math games. Let's learn a little bit about the Common Core State Standards. Your child's teacher uses very detailed standards to guide his or her instruction. Here you can see the overview of these standards, which we refer to as priority standards. Feel free to pause now to read these more carefully. If you are interested in learning more, feel free to go to the Common Core website and look up Grade 3 Math Standards. While we have numerous standards to cover each year, the mathematicians who created the Common Core Math Standards offer guidance in the area each grade level should focus the majority of their instruction on. Instruction in third grade should focus on four main areas. First, third graders are developing an understanding of multiplication and division. That's our biggest focus. Third graders are also developing an understanding of unit fractions, like one half, one fourth, etc. Our third area of focus on is developing an understanding of the structure of rectangular arrays, like the one in the picture. Arrays are an important step in understanding multiplication. Lastly, we encourage our students to describe and analyze shapes. These are called the Common Core Standards for Mathematical Practice. These standards are expected for all math students, kindergarten through grade 12. These standards emphasize important practices and mindsets about math, which align well to what current brain research on math instruction is encouraging. A different way of looking at them is to read them as I can statements. The expectation is that students leave third grade fluent with their basic multiplication and division facts. This means that they can solve the facts accurately, efficiently, using appropriate strategies and with flexibility. We also expect automaticity, which means they can solve a problem within three seconds. When working on multiplication facts, we need to practice them in a specific order. We start with foundational facts like the ones here. All other facts can build on these. Once students master the foundational facts, we can move on to the derived facts. At Inter, we use Math and Focus, utilizing Singapore math methodologies. Singapore math is a methodology which integrates established international research into a highly effective teaching approach. The heart of this methodology is problem solving, as offering context to math concepts is key to a deeper understanding. Singapore math builds conceptual understanding and positive attitudes towards math. It develops critical thinking skills and advanced problem solving proficiency. The focus is on place value and number sense. These are key concepts that form the foundation for all the math that we do now and in the future. These skills lead to greater mental math abilities and reasoning. An easy way for you to encourage this at home is to ask, is that your answer reasonable or how do you know you're correct? We need to expose our students to more than one method when teaching math. Many of us learned that math was a set of rules that needed to be followed. And if we didn't follow the rule, we felt that we weren't good at math. The focus when we're teaching math now is to offer, explore, and invite multiple approaches which encourages creativity and flexibility with numbers. We want our students to understand why we do what we do, and not just how to do it. 
We teach math concepts using CPA, Concrete Pictorial Abstract. Here's an example of CPA. The concrete part is the part students are actually touching with their hands. In this example, I would be using actual blocks with these to act out the problem. Afterward, I would do pictorial, like the picture, drawing a picture that's similar to the blocks I used. Lastly, I would use abstract, where I use numerals and operation signs. Singapore math, as I said before, focuses on problem solving. This creates a context for the math concepts we are teaching and should be integrated at the beginning, middle, and end of every new concept. In grade three, students should be familiar with the use of bar models. This is an exceptional tool for students to pictorially represent their thinking. It will help guide them through problems. To be honest, now that I know about this tool, I can't approach a word problem without it. We encourage our students to follow these seven steps when approaching a word problem. This sequence is an excellent way for students to organize their thinking and ensure they answer the problem completely. With this in mind, take a look at a way we could pictorially represent this word problem. Our brain lights up in five different areas while we're doing math. Two of these are visual. Because of this, we have some very useful pictorial models that we consistently use in our program. 10 frames are introduced in pre-K and kinder and used up until grade two. Number bonds help us compose and decompose numbers. We can use this with addition or multiplication. Bar models are introduced in grade two as a way to visually represent the math we're exploring primarily with word problems. These are a very important first step toward algebraic understanding. At Inter, we stay up to date on the current best practices in math instruction. UCubed is a wonderful website created by Joe Bowler, a Stanford University professor. It takes current brain research related to math instruction and learning and shares it with students, parents, and instructors. I highly encourage you to explore this website and the amazing resources it provides. We use small group instruction the majority of the time we're teaching math. This gives teachers the opportunity to differentiate their instruction based on the data they collect from assessments, observations, and their knowledge of the student. Within a class of 20, there are children who have different strengths and different interests. Teachers keep this in mind when they form their small groups. As you know, there's no homework in elementary, but that doesn't mean we aren't working on math at home. Please play games at home that reinforce skills being taught in the class and find ways to show that math is everywhere. Bake with your kids, count things, find shapes, model with your kids a curiosity of numbers to help them build on their natural curiosity they already have. Your child's teacher likely has encouraged you to check out Prodigy and perhaps even Freckle. These two wonderful apps provide differentiated math practice for students, are fun and engaging, and send useful reports to your child's teachers. If you're looking for an easy way to practice math at home, these two resources are ideal. Regular assessment of our student is necessary to guide instruction. When we are assessing students to see how well they're doing, we use more formative than summative. Summative assessments are things like tests that students get at the end of learning something, whereas formative assessments are given in various ways throughout the lesson. This helps teachers decide what the next steps are to ensure each student gets what he or she needs. Students also get to reflect on their learning and assess themselves in various ways. This is important so that they can own their learning and be part of the learning process. At Inter, we play lots of games. Games are an extremely useful tool in math. Not only are they fun, but they encourage students to practice the skills they're learning in various ways. Not sure where to find games? Google them. All you have to do is type in math games for third grade and you'll find amazing resources. Usually a set of dice and a stack of cards is all you need to play some wonderful games that will reinforce math skills while at the same time having fun with your family. Your child is an amazing resource as well. Ask him or her what games they are playing in the classroom. I hope this webinar was useful and you feel more informed about the math your child will be exposed to this year. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me or your child's teacher. Thank you and have a lovely day.